for joining us this Sunday evening. It's our extreme pleasure and privilege to conceptualize and organize such rewarding initiative for organizations, companies, CSR arms, and other new social businesses, startups, and individuals engaged in such remarkable, sustainable, scalable, responsible work for humanity and uplifting communities and societies. In the last three years, starting from 2017, we have made a mark by successfully hosting three grand events, felicitated more than 180 leading corporates, businesses, social organizations, and individuals for their CSR and social initiatives okay, with the help of and the guidance of renowned dignitaries and jury members and prominent organizations as our supporters and partners. We are truly honored and thank them from, uh, for their most uh, valuable support for this initiative and to the council. Now, while the world has entered into a year of health hazards, economy and uh, you know, social uncertainties due to COVID-19 pandemic, we as a health and well-being institution in India have become more firm and responsible in our ideology to promote health for all, engage more entities working towards uplifting communities, societies, and the needy, and try to support the government initiatives of health and environment for our countrymen. Therefore, we felt the need for continuing our fourth edition of the CSR Health Impact Awards 2020 with a focus on highlighting the contribution of organizations and individuals fighting COVID-19 and also the noticeable achievements uh, in the main CSR category. This year, just like uh, our other landmark web initiatives, which make us the leading institution in India to host many web-based initiatives and reach out to millions through our live streaming and online promotion, we will be hosting the fourth CSR Health Impact Awards 2020 co-edition as a special web show on the 21st and the 22nd of August. Now, this in this special edition of the pre-event show today, we have selected some of the key social projects out of the 230 nominations received. And we feel that it is important to highlight such influential initiatives, which have a capacity to transform community and society at large and create a sizable impact. Today in the CSR Impact Show, we have project teams and key people behind these influential initiatives. And we bring you one on one with the team and the individuals to understand the vision behind such initiatives and how they have made a mark in creating such a remarkable impact. We will welcome today and speak with the teams. Uh, the teams that we have today include Artist Wish Foundation, American Indian Foundation, Vedanta Limited, BRSC Welcome Cure, and Mantra for Services. I would like to welcome all the team participants today, and I'd like to start and welcome Dr. Hima Devakar, the founder of Artis. Welcome, Dr. Devakar. Namaskar. Now, the Artis project that we're going to talk about today is Capacity Building, Preparing COVID Warriors. Now, the Artis team, led by Dr. Hima Devakar, has spearheaded training healthcare professionals in maternal and child health space on a large scale through a digital platform. This has empowered frontline health providers to reset and restart their work with confidence and competence. Uh, Ma'am, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what to understand from you, is it just COVID that made you go digital? I love this question, Anisha. Thank you. And thank you to the IHW Council because you know, in the last three years, when we have scaled up our attempts to reach every girl, every woman, also generate the demand, giving them awareness, generate the supply side by building the capacity of healthcare providers. We used to travel nook and corners of the country, like right from Aligarh to, um, uh, you know, um, the Girid or Sitapur or Tumkur. And then I said, oh, this is getting impossible. You know, right. this is not the way and we cannot fulfill our dream. And that is why three years ago, I decided digital is the only way. And 
we embarked on a major digital connect initiative and uh, look back with satisfaction of a lot more things we can do but believe me anisha there was just nobody who was convinced that this could ever fulfill the gap of the implementation of many of our initiative and i must thank covid pandemic for coming to our rescue if i may say because what we could not do in the 3 years of our digitalization attempts to reach people just in flat 3 months everybody came on board because they said yes we agree that that's the way to move ahead so before covid during covid and definitely with the prime minister announcing the digital mission beyond mm-hmm. covid we will go digital because i always believe that the digital technology and healthcare should be strongly married to each other for a blended benefit to all definitely in our country the size the scale the population you can't reach everybody by physically going there right and uh, like the prime minister also said digital is the way to go but what is the vision and the mission of artists well uh, <clears throat> i'm working in the women's healthcare space as an obgyn since the last 3 plus uh, decades and uh, my vision is in alignment to change the healthcare ecosystem prevent illness mm-hmm. and promote wellness so this is what we announced about 10 years ago and again i allude to the fact that covid has brought into the forefront that health is wealth and prevention is better than cure that definitely has reemphasized our uh, vision of preventive uh, healthcare and uh, the mission of course through artist the art of artist a r t a is for advocacy we have to tell people make them aware of what's going on and the r is the research because indian context is very different what is going on on the ground what is feasible what we can and what we cannot how we reshape our implementation initiatives to make things work in this great diverse country that is the r the research part of it and the t mm-hmm. is the training and capacity building which i have already said so the training part of it that is the blended both digital and in person uh, component mm-hmm. and uh, uh, by generating the supply side as well the art the um, uh, advocacy research and training actually the artist expands into asian research and training institute of skill transfer which is based out mm-hmm. of bangalore so uh, from about a decade we have recognized that india should be the role model for the whole of asia that is why when we launched this we made it the asian research because many a times from our organization of the gynecologists whatever has worked for us in india nepal bangladesh inclusive of pakistan maldives everybody wants mm-hmm. to kind of capture that prototype or the mm-hmm. model so yes. we uh, should really be in the forefront of setting our pace and stage for asia so that is the, in short the vision and mission of artist yes definitely it's always easier to copy paste replicate and start something on your own mm-hmm. but you said that covid has hastened digital awareness and people have understood that prevention is better than uh, you know taking reactive measures to getting a disease mm-hmm. but given the status of women in our country mm-hmm. you know uh, they never go to a doctor unless they are in a severe problem so how are you finding this awareness and how are you training uh, healthcare uh, people to make end users the women be aware of their health and take preventive steps because most women think ki unless it's really bad i'm okay how do we get this out and is this entire pandemic also making women aware that whatever small issues let's be more aware and let's reach out to people because now it's easier you can do it digitally on one hand anisha i must say that it's not only women in india but the entire community of us has a mindset okay when we get into trouble let's see we'll cross the bridge when we come to it kind of you know the preventive uh, care both for men and women the mindset has to change and this is a compelling moment where this change can be brought in and it should be brought in for 
sure, you know, for the entire community may it be women or men. Having said this, the gender inequalities, you know, the empowerment of the women, the education of the women, the equal opportunities to access care and make her own decisions. There is a huge gap there. So there I agree that women may wa have wanted to do this, that and the other. But there are many, many more constraints than a man would have to reach the same amount or degree of avail the same degree of uh, preventive care. Having said this, the new generation, we definitely want to integrate the sustainable development goals in a way that education, gender equity, empowerment, good health for all, everything should we should break the silos and integrate that. So even in the uh, pandemic of COVID, we have again focused on the ART, the advocacy, that is the preventive care, which comes in so many channels on the television radios of which I have uh, been an integral part. But the kind of initiatives on the social media, on an interactive session where the women and children they can ask us questions we have mm. done a whole range of program right from the school children who ask some brilliant questions on the preventive methodologies and what if and this that and the other and we see the younger girls taking charge of themselves and mm. the women taking charge of the families to do their best bit in this pandemic so advocacy has been you know one great part in the covid initiative and as soon as we recognize that our state of Karnataka, you know, the COVID is coming because we can have a predictive model and say when we will reach the peak. So double quick readiness is the key. So we got the digital platform onto every single district pan Karnataka in collaboration with the Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences made an interactive module, the videos, and they had to implement it, send us back the photographs to see how. So entire preparedness of the healthcare workforce, mm -hmm. half of them who had run away to their hometowns, mm -hmm. they got the confidence to come back and mm -hmm. you know follow the uh, protocols as it were. So the demand and the supply, both we have to match all the time that we have to keep it in focus and the research part of it. Yes, we've already produced three papers in the uh, international journals because they're hungry for the Asian data, hungry mm. for Indian data because our numbers of cases are so many and mm. our women behave a little differently, uh, being asymptomatic and as you said, not seeking mm. care on time mm. and what can be the implication both on her and the child. So there's a lot, a really a lot happening uh, in the COVID pandemic and we are learning more lessons each minute, I must say. Mm. Right. Uh, Dr. Devaka, you've uh, talked to us about uh, the advocacy part, but I still want to understand how uh, the initiative worked out, uh, the initiative undertaken by artists in this con uh, COVID pandemic, because no one knew it's coming, right? And people are taking it easy going digital. And you said people just ran back home after they heard, oh, pandemic is coming. So how did you take your digital platform all over the state of Karnataka? Yeah. So as I said, the advocacy for both the peer group, that is the OBGYN group, to sensitize them about the newer protocols that they will have to follow, both mm -hmm. for the care of the mother and the child. That was one part of it. The advocacy for the staff of the hospital who have to fall in line with the infection prevention control policies and uh, everything was like a live demo because skill transfer is a skill transfer. In theory, everybody will know, but is it getting implemented on the ground? That gap has to definitely be bridged to see the uh, impact and even the housekeeping staff and the security right from there, the entire you know group of the hospital cadre inclusive of the front desk, the admin staff, the courses ran for every segment because it's important to break the chain of COVID. We should maintain a continuum of the chain of our healthcare providers doing the same things, being on the same page, no mask, no entry. You know, there's some simple, um, you know, uh, dictums like that, which made them fall in mm -hmm. line. And every week they had to send us some uh, videos and uh, photographs of what they've actually been doing in their own setups, mm -hmm. because we have to make sure that they have implemented what we have 
uh, skill transfer. So that was about the healthcare community. Even you know, every day new information about uh, what kind of tests we should be doing and how we have to care for mm. the pregnant women because everything can stop in a pandemic, right? But mm. menstruation and deliveries cannot stop mm. because they have to anyway by nature uh, have to happen. So this is hugely challenging because it becomes an essential service mm. so the capacity building was one part of it but at the same time at the same time each one teach one is the kind of policy where mm. every segment wherever we could reach whether it was apartment complexes corporates which are uh, uh, sitting at home uh, uh, being uh, uh, clouded with uh, many of the doubts and anxieties we had interactive sessions for each one of them to tell them why they have to do whatever they have to do because just telling them do this that and the other there's a little more to it when we dialogue and interact they mm. come out with some strange doubts and once they are convinced then they know that they're responsible not only for their health but mm. also for the health of the others around them so that makes them a little more alert at the end of our dialogue i will show you a two minute video about how mm. we did the digital you know, courses actually demonstrating the donning and doffing of the uh, preventive you know, protective equipment and hand washing and uh, came out with some acronyms to uh, made a song to uh, let them you know recall that yeah, again yeah. and again so whatever because it's innovation to implementation right because this is mm -hmm. you know it is uh, so little we know about this but there is so much that we need to do so mm -hmm. that uh, was a, a challenge but uh, you know where there's a will there is a <laughs> Dr. Devakar, uh, can you briefly tell us uh, what is the feedback that you have received from people about this training program and does the knowledge of, you know, I'm doing my best and this is the best precaution that can be taken, has it been empowering for these people? Have they overcome their fears and are they able to better uh, uh, deliver the services that they're supposed to? Certainly, I think, uh, you know, that's why we said the confidence and the competence, because only when they understand and then they actually done it and there's an opportunity to, you know, strike back with us for any kind of queries or barriers or challenges uh, that they may have had. That makes a huge difference. And also Health Arch is one of the apps that we have introduced in collaboration with Mount Sinai Hospital from uh, the New York City, where uh, all... Uh, Many, many thousands in the community get preventive healthcare messages, the mindfulness courses, and uh, they can chat with the back end team of uh, the doctors to small. And then the entire home monitoring system is available on the app. So, those who are at home, especially with diabetes and hypertension and other comorbidities who need a day to day kind of a monitoring. So that is also on the digital platform uh, made uh, available and health for her is a YouTube channel, uh, both uh, in uh, national language uh, and English and Canada as well. So uh, the scale up has already happened because this initiative, which we piloted in the whole of Karnataka uh, to the teams of the healthcare okay. providers, it has now reached uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, uh, UP, and uh, some of the other clusters in Tamil Nadu who have sought similar kind of digital training programs. Uh, we have created the master trainers and cascading it because I already told you the scale uh, that needs to be reached is so big that one person cannot really do it. Of course, I have Dr. Divakar and the whole team of artists, but there are so many more escalating this implementation initiative everywhere in the country. And now uh, we are doing the trainings for Myanmar and uh, uh, Bangladesh as well. So, uh, you know, everybody feels that uh, uh, it's easy to access and that's a great change in the uh, mindset. And there is an opportunity you know, for us to do our bit beyond the geographies of where we are located. Great. Ma'am, uh, what is the roadmap? What is the plan ahead for the future? What's the new normal and beyond? The new normal, Anisha, has already become like old because like we've all got, you know, acclimatized to it and, you know, the human uh, nature of 
you know, we have to live with it, so adapt it, but see the positives in it, like how it has brought so many of the stakeholders uh, uh, close to each other to work in synergies, to escalate uh, uh, the vision and the mission. And the roadmap is, I know it's always been, we strongly believe that women's health is nation's wealth because it all, if you actually see the complexities of all the diseases which are now prevailing in the adults, it all starts in uterus because if you invest largely on the care of the pregnant women, the child in the womb, which is programmed, is programmed appropriately if she is healthy. And from there begins the healthy generation next. So uh, in keeping with uh, our philosophy of connect and collaborate, we are happily connecting with all this relevant stakeholders because it is not one compartment that you have to look at. We have to integrate just like the IHW philosophy when they say good air, good food, good health, good everything. So there are so many elements, so many aspects to it and we have to come together to make this world a better place. So in the roadmap, we will move along ART, that is advocacy, research, and training, because unless you research, document, audit the data, you have to make course corrections. You have to learn your own lessons to change gears and see how best and how far you can reach. So the journey is long, but something has been done, and we humbly submit that a lot more needs to be done. So the mission is on. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Devakar, for taking us through your project and how artists is changing lives and training people to deal with uh, the new reality. I would request you to please play out your video so that all of us can have a better understanding of how this training program is prepared. Sure. Thank you, Anisha. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everyone, yet again this fine morning to learn more about how to make your hospitals a COVID-friendly hospital. We are so happy to have 26 hospitals on board today to learn more from us about the three important issues. We are recapping what we have taught you four days ago. One is about the social distancing, which is a must in your waiting rooms. If you've not already set it, please, please keep Bijapur, Bagalkot, everywhere. And then we have to actually demonstrate this is how you have to make the patient sit at a distance of more than three feet and how uh, they have to enter, how the security guy has to handle them. And then for hand wash, we had a small acronym called SUMAN. So we said, oh, you'd be having a girlfriend called SUMAN. So remember her, Sida, Ulta, then M for Mutti. Uh, N for nails and uh, A for anguta and you know we used to teach them in a way that the appropriate method of hand washing is also followed and uh, uh, the uh, last of it the kalai so when we say 20 seconds of hand washing then it should include all of these steps the, the correct way of hand washing which was demonstrated and we made them repeat that and week after week the teams happily sent us the videos of what they're doing and how they do it, and a whole process of donning and doffing the PPE. This is indeed a multi-step process, which in itself will take a complete uh, five minutes. So how the staff nurses uh, um, and the healthcare providers have to wear uh, the goggles because um, just beware of the men is what we say, M-E-N mouth eyes and nose that needs to be <laughs> covered so m-e-n for mouth eyes and nose which should not be repeatedly touched that's the importance of hand washing you repeatedly wash your hands so that the virus cannot enter even if you touch your nose or mouth or eyes that is the usual portals of entry and uh, how uh, you need to uh, wash your hands after this, how you have to wear your mask and how you have to wear your gown and how you have to wear the gloves and how you de-glove and uh, all the way through. So um, 
every step of whatever they were supposed to do inclusive of conducting a safe uh, uh, delivery and uh, the care of the child so this was a very interactive module with uh, very many interruptions and uh, um, dialogues and whatever they want how many ever times they want they would ask they would make sure that they know and i used to always tell them the air hostess in every flight tells you about the oxygen mask dropping etc etc but when there is a real crisis unless you've done it once before you may not be able to replicate what she says so they have to actually do and show and that is the essence of skill transfer so uh, i think um, it has been a very um, insightful and meaningful exercise pan india now and uh, this will continue to some clinical standards of safe delivery and uh, uh, and childbirth and other aspects for uh, women and child care as well so this has inspired us and motivated us definitely to do more and uh, as you said uh, what needs to be seen is from innovation to implementation to make an impact and we are well on the road to be doing that thank you dr vakar for uh, showing us this video and wish you all the very best in your mission to transfer relevant important crucial skills by all means possible a uh, real contact digital contact we wish you all the very best thank you very much on behalf of the vakar myself and team artists namaskar once again Thank you ma'am